Former PlayStation president Sean Layden is talking about the industry again, where he sees the future of games going, and has some thoughts on exclusives. It all happened in an interview with GamesBeat, where Layden pointed out that exclusivity is the Achilles heel of these expensive productions that exceed $200 million. Exclusivity reduces your addressable market, particularly when you're in the world of live service gaming or free to play, another platform is just another way of opening the funnel, getting more people in. In a free to play world as we know, 95% of those people will never spend a nickel, the business is all about conversion. You have to improve your odds by cracking the funnel open. Helldivers 2 has shown that for PlayStation, coming out on PC at the same time. However, he indicated that single player games don't have the same pressure, but still companies may want to get as many people as possible, even if it's just 10% more. The global install base for consoles, if you go back to the PS1 and everything else is stacked up there, wherever in time you look at it, the cumulative consoles out there never gets over 250 million, it just doesn't. The dollars have gone up over time, but I look at that and see that we're just taking more money from the same people. Layden also sees that companies are not doing enough to get people into console gaming, as they try to attract them with more of the same. We are not going to attract them by doing more of the shit we are doing now. If 95% of the world doesn't want to play Call of Duty, Fortnite and Grand Theft Auto, is the industry just going to make more Call of Duty, Fortnite and Grand Theft Auto? That's not going to get you anybody else. And he didn't miss the chance to point out what he has said in the past about games being bigger in scope. We have to scale back the ambition, not the creative ambition, not the entertainment ambition. Again I want 15 to 20 hour games, as the average age of the gamer has increased over time from early 20s to early 30s. We have seen the swap between people who are time rich and money poor, to people who are time poor and money rich. That person can feed an 80 hour game into their lifestyle. I still have Red Dead Redemption 2 in shrink wrap on my shelf, it's way too much. Layden left Sony in 2019 and is now working as a strategic advisor for Tencent, so his optic is different, but we are starting to see most of what he has said in the past play out, with Microsoft supporting more platforms and PlayStation supporting PCs. The executive later explained a bit more of the role for exclusives in a recent interview with the What's Up PlayStation podcast where he said that exclusivity will always be important, as it helps focus and highlight the features of your platform, but as your platform becomes established, as the market recognizes where you sit in that pantheon of gaming options, I think the necessity of exclusivity becomes a little bit less. Exclusives are a necessary evil to push consumers to buy your product, but as the prices for AAA development keep going up, and with newer generations playing more on non-console devices, it has turned into getting consumers into your ecosystem, rather than pushing them toward hardware to open that 250 million user funnel. What do you think about the future of exclusive games? What's your opinion in the comments? Welcome to hype for games here are more gaming news that you need to know. Now let's talk about PS5 and Helldivers 2, as the February numbers from UK sales paint a pretty picture for Sony, despite PS5 not being on par with the previous year. Over 95,000 total consoles were sold in the region, 33% down against last year, and 13% down against last month. And out of that, PS5 was the leader but also saw declines of 28% year on year, and 2% against last month. Nintendo was second and the Xbox series came up in third. The reason for this is that Sony had fixed its stock issues early last year, after a long period where people couldn't get a PS5, besides Hogwarts Legacy launched last year, which boosted sales from the previous month. Moving to games, Helldivers 2 took easily the top spot, given its sales rose 115% after the first week of launch, and another 21% after the third, defying the normal sales cycle of games. Most of the copies are sold on PS5 with a 57-43% split with PC. Helldivers 2 sales are also really impressive because it's a new IP that is getting huge numbers, for example it did just 28% less than what Spider-Man 2 did after 3 weeks. Other new games debuting in the top 10 were Suicide Squad at number 4, but doing 20% less than Gotham Knights did in 2021. Skull and Bones was at the 8th spot but also selling less than other pirate games such as Sea of Thieves, 75% less than what the Microsoft game did in March 2018. 
The rest of the chart had what you would expect with EA Sports FC24 losing the crown to Helldivers 2, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 and Grand Theft Auto 5 stay static in 3rd and 5th respectively, plus Red Dead Redemption 2 and Last of Us 2 Remaster rising and dropping one spot each. Accessories also had a PS5 item on the top with the DualSense controller, followed by the robot white Xbox Series controller. Sony's Pulse Elite launched last month and debuted at number 15 by units and 4th by sales amount. In a similar situation was Helldivers 2 on the PlayStation Store's top downloads for February, and Final Fantasy VII Rebirth also did amazing. On PS5, Helldivers 2 commanded the chart for both US, Canada and European regions, followed up by Final Fantasy VII Rebirth in second, a great result for the game on digital after just one day, given it was released on February 29. On the third spot we had EA Sports FC24 in Europe, but Suicide Squad in North America, the WB game didn't have the same luck in the EU where it landed 8. Suicide Squad has been performing similarly in retail and digital rankings, even if it's below WB games expectations. Madden NFL and NBA 2K24 closed the top 5 in the US Canada, while the Tomb Raider remaster was a surprise going ahead of GTA 5 in Europe. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 registered its worth month in 6th place, the lowest it has been since launching in November last year. Other new releases included Ubisoft's Skull and Bones, 8th in North America and 7th in Europe, and Persona 3 Reload at 9 in the US Canada. For PS4, Red Dead Redemption 2 and Minecraft topped the chart, followed by Madden NFL 24, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 and NBA 2K24 in North America, then in Europe it was EA Sports FC24, Need for Speed Heat and A Way Out. Meanwhile, PSVR 2 had Legendary Tales debuting first in North America and third in Europe, with 4 VR Ball jumping to first there, Beat Saber landed third across both regions, and Among Us VR, Pavlov and Arizona Sunshine 2 complemented the top 5. Free to play had Fortnite, Roblox and Call of Duty Warzone top 3 in both regions, followed by Apex Legends and Fall Guys in North America, and Hawk debuted last in the top 5 but only in Europe. What games did you pick up last month? Let us know in the comments. You know what's another game that's topping the PlayStation Store charts right now? If you guessed an Xbox game, congratulations! As noted by Benji Sales on Twitter, Sea of Thieves is a best-selling pre-order on the PlayStation Store in the US and in other regions as well. It's even the prices bundle going for $59.99 with the standard edition following closely at 5th and beating upcoming games such as MLB The Show 24, Dragon's Dogma 2 or The Elden Ring DLC. Microsoft said in a business update last month that Sea of Thieves was one of the only 4 games that would be published on other platforms, but one might wonder if this success will lead Microsoft to publish even more games, as it has been rumored for others such as Starfield, Indiana Jones and even Xbox 10 polls such as Halo. Are you looking forward to Sea of Thieves? Tell us in the comments below. Next fans are looking forward to Stellar Blade launching in April, and since the rumor demo last week there have been some developments. The 16GB demo went live ahead of time on Friday, but it was only live for 30 minutes before Sony pulled it from the PlayStation Store. Some lucky fans were able to try it out, and it runs for about 40 to 90 minutes, allowing you to check out the first section of the game and you can save transfer to the full game once it launches on April 25th. Sony however has disabled the licenses and patched the demo, so unless you stay offline you won't be able to play it. The good news is that it's now confirmed that a demo is coming, and for anyone who wasn't lucky, well we have to continue waiting. Were you able to download the demo? Have you been locked out without playing? Or are you still waiting? Share with us in the comments. Speaking of getting locked out of game content, it appears there's a weird bug that is claiming PlayStation users' libraries and wiping them out, including purchases and PS Plus games. One of the affected users has posted on Reddit explaining how the bug works, removing all your digital licenses and decoupling your transaction history from your account. Your transaction history will look the same, but the purchase tab and games library will only let you access games that you got after the bug with everything else being locked and asking you to purchase again or reinstall, but when you try to do that it will say that you own the content already, so you end up basically in a loop. The user said that they were affected after trying to play Helldivers 2 at 11.50pm on February 29 and getting this error message. 
After that they attempted to restore licenses and that triggered the bug, locking them out of everything purchased before that and their account dates from 2007. Their recommendation if you get the error for a game you have played previously is to look at your game library and purchases on playstation.com. If anything looks incorrect, like you are missing games for example, do not use restore licenses on your console. It gets even more frustrating as the user has not been able to get any information from PlayStation support and contacting them via chat is a dead end. Other users had Sony chat support offering them to compensate for all these issues and all they could give was a month of PS Plus Premium which is laughable. Despite all this and while Sony is remaining silent, they are investigating the issue and it's said that there are about 50 plus people affected. I'm not sure if all of them were tied to the date February 29, but if that's the case it could be one of the reasons. Let's remember PSN logged PS3 users back in 2010 due to the internal clock for the system thinking it was a leap year. I'm not saying it's exactly the same here, just remember that PSN is made of duct tape, they have improved the duct tape, but it's still duct tape. Just kidding these systems are made by humans so they will have mistakes, especially around leap years, so let's hope Sony fixes it soon. Remember do not use restore licenses for any issue you run into until at least we get word that this has been fixed. Are you one of the affected users? What do you think about this and the threat of an all digital future? Voice your opinion in the comments. Moving on we have an update on the rumors that Sony may be working on more PS5 remasters and PC ports and it appears another Soccer Punch game could be up next. The source of this leak was also the one who talked about the Ghost of Tsushima PC port before officially announced and is now claiming to be working for Nixus, the PlayStation Studio in charge of porting games to PC, who may be working on an Infamous Second Son port. Infamous Second Son was released in 2014, and alongside first light release in the same year, were the last entries of the Infamous franchise before Soccer Punch moved on to make Ghost of Tsushima. I would love it if the remaster is real, although I would prefer the original PS3 games, but if this can show Sony their interest in the franchise, maybe they can bring it back with another studio. Would you like Sony to bring back Infamous? Share with us in the comments. Next we have a couple of sad stories, the first one is related to the Aviation games, as the studio formed by ex Call of Duty developers and backed by Sony is closing. Chief HR and Operations Officer Christy Stoll announced it on LinkedIn, expressing gratitude to the entire team for their hard work, dedication and contributions. They will be hosting a networking event for employees and companies looking to hire to help people transition. Ex Call of Duty Black Ops veterans Jason Blundell and Dave Anthony formed the studio in 2020, and in 2021 PlayStation signed them to work on a new original AAA IP. However, Blundell left in September 2022, and the studio faced a round of layoffs in May last year. This is very sad to hear given the alarming number of layoffs the industry has faced short of three months into 2024. Here's hoping everyone affected land on their feet. And the world is still reacting to the passing of iconic creator Akira Toriyama, who passed away on March 1st, and it was announced on Friday, March 8th. PlayStation reacted with a post on Twitter thanking the creator for his work, and the official Dragon Quest Twitter account also reacted extending their condolences and heartfelt gratitude for Toriyama's work, who helped create the franchise. Among the tons of support and reactions from around the world, one of the most heartwarming has to be fans of Dragon Ball Z Xenoverse 2 who got together inside the game to pay tribute to the creator. Thank you Akira Toriyama for sharing your creativity with the world and inspiring many generations. And those are the PlayStation stories for today. Let me know what you think in the comments below, give this video a thumbs up or down to let me know your feedback. Check out more content you may like as well, such as Spider-Man 2 and Baldur's Gate 3 dominating BAFTA nominations, and subscribe for more on PlayStation. Thank you so much for watching, my name is Joseph, this is Hyper Games, and I'll see you on the next one.